What do you want to do? I don't care. Make a decision. Have them walk in on the side that they're going to sit in. Okay, so walk in on. So you do you want a mask, bride, or groom? Right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and if they say bride, so in case you all haven't picked up, this is the yeah. groom's side. <laughs> this is bride's side. Okay. Like how it stands. Yeah. 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 Other questions? Questions are good there. Okay. Now, tonight we act like we live in a perfect world. Uh, for those of you who haven't discovered yet, we don't live in a perfect world. And so if something happens tomorrow that we didn't talk about tonight, we'll still have a wedding. If you realize that you made a mistake, don't say, oh my God, or don't say, oh. You know, just keep moving, correct, adjust, and keep going. I make 100 mistakes every Sunday morning. I just act like I meant to do it that way. And most people never catch on that I made a mistake, okay? All right, so, you know, just keep moving. Just adjust. Um, you know, now things may happen we don't expect. When I was in the Richmond area, I had a couple of Ed and Diana. Uh, Ed was very emotional before we came in. He was on the verge of tears. And so we came in, we're standing here, and the best man leans over and says something to Ed. Now, I don't know what it was, but Ed had a radical mood shift. So he went from being on the verge of tears to laughing hysterically. This is no exaggeration. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So bride party's coming in. I'm thinking, you know, surely Ed's going to pull himself together. The bride comes in. Diana comes in. <laughs> turn around. <laughs> you know, so I mean, I can't uh, do the wedding with him laughing at me. So I turn this way. And I'm kind of talking over here, and Ed's over here. So he pulls himself together. I turn back around. I think everything's good. It was until I had to turn to hold hands and do the vows. No exaggeration. <laughs> Thank you, Diana. And uh, so I couldn't turn away at that point, so guess what happened to me? <laughs> so the bride's mother's face was the color of this carpet. And I thought, oh boy, get me out of here. So I asked for the rings. Best man pulls a box of Cracker Jacks. It's all the same way. Pulls Cracker Jacks out of his pocket, tears open the Cracker Jacks, goes down the entire bridal party pouring Cracker Jacks in everyone's hand. I knew they couldn't stand there and hold the Cracker Jacks, so I followed along, told them to do the Cracker Jacks on my pad. So I had a mound of Cracker Jacks, you know, <laughs> trying to read my script. They're still happily married. They've been here to visit me since I've been in Blacksburg. Now, uh, a few years later, her sister Allison was getting married, and his name was Neil, and at the rehearsal we said, oh, you know, no, we don't want any of this laughing stuff like we had for a wedding, you know, let's not do that. And so Neil was supposed to say with love and affection, but he said with love and infection. <laughs> and uh, you know, I thought that I was going to have to have surgery on my face. You know, trying to keep a straight face after he said it. Okay. So you know, but everybody's still happily married. So something happens, we just adjust to keep it. Um, I don't. You know, I don't think this is that relevant to this group, but just, just in case. I always advocate the moderation of consumption of alcoholic beverages on the night before a wedding because you, know, you might go out on Friday night, have a few drinks, and Saturday you function fine, but tomorrow's not any typical Saturday, and it's a little humid in addition to that, and you're going to be nervous, and if you've been drinking the night before, it could be problematic you know, the next day at a wedding. So when I was in Springfield, I had a guy come in, said that he had drank a fifth of vodka. So I looked at him, I thought he looked pretty good. He drank a fifth of vodka. We got through most of the wedding, and uh, at the end of the last prayer, he, he, looked, he sweated so much, it's like somebody poured a bucket of water on him. And I thought that was good, he deserved it. We were drinking a fifth of vodka. And I started the prayer, and he said, uh, I'm going to pass out. And I thought it was like a little kid, you know, you just don't pay attention to it. So I kept praying. And he said, I'm going to pass out. But this, now he started rocking, you know, back and forth. So, you know, I motioned to the best man, you know, to kind of watch it. I kept praying. And so I got done with the prayer. And I had a lapel mic on, so I covered up and I leaned over. And I said to her, I said, can you 
No, I said to him, can you kiss the bride? And the only thing he could say that day was, I'm going to pass it. So I looked at her and I said, I'm kissing him, I'll tell you to. So I said, you may not kiss the bride, but there was a problem. She was wearing a veil. Right? So guess who removed the veil? Right? <laughs> the reason I left that church is practicing polygamy. Okay, so. Don't <laughs> want any incidents like that tomorrow. Right? So, you know, everybody just take it easy tonight. There'll be plenty of other times. Any 